Oh, hello YouTubians. I've got a Benjamin Marauder air rifle and that rifle has an o-ring just inside the breech. There's been a lot of discussion about what cleaning chemicals are safe to use on an o-ring but I couldn't find anybody that had actually tested it so I'm going to test it. took a piece of plywood and a couple strips of aluminum and divided it up. I put in some dents to hold the o-rings and labeled them. So I went to Ace Hardware and I bought some o-rings. I'm going to put one in each of these dimples and put various cleaning chemicals on this. Uh, get them wet with each chemical and then let it set for a while and then test the o-ring to see if it's deteriorated at all. So the chemicals I'm going to use are uh, all that I've pulled out of my collection of cleaning chemicals that I've gathered over the years. I'm going to take Ordinary Hockbees number 9 and get that out of the way. Add some Hoppies Bench Rest Copper Solvent, CLP, uh, add some Old Shooter's Choice. I'm going to try that. This is an ammonia based gun cleaner that I've had forever and it stinks. So I'm going to try that, see what that does. Then uh, WD-40, which everybody says is a no-no, but let's test it and find out. Kroll oil. And then, just for a final test, paint thinner. So, I'll go ahead and get these wet, and then I'll come back with you tomorrow and let you see what's happened so far. And my plan is, is that I'm not going to do a video every day. Uh, I'm just going to continue doing the test and I'll update it if it looks like one of the o-rings is deteriorating real badly. Okay, this is the methodology I'm going to use for the test. I'm going to take an ordinary Q-tip and I'm going to saturate it in one chemical, get the O-ring good and wet. Then I'm going to take the other end of the Q-tip and use that for the next one because I don't want to contaminate this chemical with the previous one and I also want just one chemical on each O-ring to make sure I get a valid test. Oh, get in there. I'll do that for the rest of them and then uh, get back to you with updates. Well, let's start with the hoppies and see what we see. I don't see any dissolving of the rubber here. It's still nice and stretchy. So that looks pretty good so far. I'm going to dispose of these so I don't contaminate the other samples. This is the Hoppy's Bench Rest Copper Solvent. Uh, the Hoppy's was that color originally, so I don't think that's rubber that's dissolved. But it's still stretchy and strong. CLP. Same thing, still looks good. This is the shooter's choice. No problems there. This is that ammonia cleaner. It's RB17 is the name of it. more test sticks here. This is WD-40. Hasn't dissolved. 
ring is still in good condition. This is Kroll oil. And so far so good. And finally, paint thinner. Doesn't dissolve the rubber yet. Still stretchy. Well, so far, I don't see any problems with any of these cleaners. Uh, I'm not going to do updates uh, unless I actually discover a problem with one of them. Then I'll describe to you what it, what's happened. So I'll see you then. Bye bye. Hello again. The O-rings have been soaked 11 times now, and I've got some observations. As you might expect, the paint thinner and the WD-40 both evaporate very quickly. The Croil, because it's a penetrant and needs to hang around long enough to work, and the CLP, because it's protectant, both don't evaporate much at all. The RB-17 ammonia-based cleaner O-ring is beginning to look deteriorated. It's beginning to look like it's shriveled, so be interesting to watch that. I'm going to go ahead and put the 12th coat on, and I've gotten a little bit more efficient at it, so I'll show you what I've done. Uh, some of you may wonder how I got the WD-40 on there without making a mess. I take a uh, oh, ordinary paper cup and squirt some in there. I'm going to do this off camera so I don't get any on the O-rings. And take a Q-tip and soak it up before it evaporates. Put it on the WD-40, and then I've been taking a pair of diagonal cutters and cutting off the tip, and that gives me a clean end to work with. So I am going to go ahead and take the uh, Hoppies number nine. Apply that and put it in the miniature garbage can. The Hoppy's bench rest. I put the CLP in a drip bottle so I don't have to use a Q-tip for that one. Shooter's Choice. Seventeen. Paint thinner because I've already got a Q tip in my hand. Okay, now I'm going to turn them, cut the toothpick in half, make sure they're coated on both sides. Mm 
and give them a stretch to see how they work. Now I'm going to use the other end of the toothpicks, which I didn't do at first. I didn't think I could do it, but actually you can pretty easy. In case you want to do it yourself. That looks pretty good. CLP. Shooter's Choice. Oops, I don't flipped over right away. Still a good stretch to it. RB17. Pretty thick and gooey. Still stretches pretty good. Royal. And paint thinner, which still hasn't evaporated, but it's working on it. One final observation, the smell of this stuff is unique. And this stuff goes straight into a covered garbage can because the wife really does complain when she comes out here. That's it for this time. We'll see if anything else comes up. Well, I finally finished. I put the 30th coat of the cleaners on the O-rings last night, but during the month I missed a couple of days, so they've actually been soaking for 32 days. One other thing you may have noticed is that some of these O-rings look like they're a lot fatter than others. Like, you notice how thin that particular one that was soaked in the paint thinner is? And then you look up here at the, the Hoppies number 9 or the Hoppies bench rest, they look thicker. But that's just an optical illusion because these are still wet. If you pick them up out of the fluid, they uh, appear to be their normal size. And I thought the uh, RB17 was deteriorating the O-ring, and it's not. It was just the product was drying on the metal underneath it and made it look like it was deteriorating. Uh, I actually think it's in pretty good shape. When I was turning them over every night, I tested them for how well they stretched and how well they looked. And frankly, I don't see any difference between the eight of them right now. So I'm going to devise a test and see if I can measure how much they still stretch, and we'll see what happens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a center punch, put it in this vise, cinch it down, then I'm going to take each of the O-rings one at a time and I'm going to stretch them over the punch and see how well they stretch and how well they recover. So let's see what happens. Okay, that's stretched out pretty well. Looks like it recovered to the same size it was originally. I'll continue with the rest. Well, frankly, I'm kind of surprised. I don't see any difference between those O-rings. Well, I think I'm going to keep them in case I need them.